All right, viewers, hello and welcome to the stream. Today, we were going to have the Team Covenant Aces final match, and what a final match it will be. I wish we had a, a little bit more diversity in these two lists. They're basically, they just, you know, sort of mirrors of each other. Not wholly, but fairly so. Um, what the hell? Um, but in terms of the caliber of player, really can't get much better. Um, I talked about this at the end of my last stream, but I really, basically, the two, the second and third best players in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, look at the track record of the two. Tex, Dallas Parker, uh, won Team Covenant Open, pretty much the biggest Wave 5 tournament there ever was. It's over 120 initial entrants. Uh, beat everyone. He won a store championship or two down in his uh, home area in Cali. Uh, and the 2013 uh, world champion runner-up to Paul Heaver. And then Morgan Reed, the Australian national champ, he uh, likewise won a big Wave 5 tournament in Australia. That I think they call it like, the Australian Day Out or something like that. I see stars. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, and he also uh, was a uh, world champion runner-up to, of course, Paul Heaver. So, really... I think you could make a pretty strong argument that these guys really are the second and third best players alive. Yeah, sorry about that. That was my cat. She'll be making <laughs> appearances throughout the show. And uh, really, uh, this game could really be the determining factor of who is uh, the better player. Probably not wholly, but still we'll give a decent argument to the winner. So let's go ahead and Take a look at the list. This is Dallas Parker's uh, bit of a redux of a list that he was running at uh, during the store championship season. Typically, he was I saw he was running Fell and Chirino, and he's basically swapped uh, Fell for Vader in this instance. I'm not crazy about the adrenaline rush. I prefer Predator on Vader, especially with ATC. Um, but Chirno is a tough cookie to crack. That upgrade card you can't see is an engine upgrade. Pretty standard Chirino loadout. You see it a lot. And I think this is going to be a pretty popular uh, list post uh, Raider. Um, I still think Fell is going to be Fell Chirino is going to be really popular. But I think a lot of guys consider Vader to be an alpha pilot now. Uh, the oh, can never remember what the hell they're called. Nova Squadron. Their latest podcast. They broke down what they feel is uh, the top lists in uh, the meta right now, and to find Vader Chirino once the Raider is dropped as being that top tier one list. Either Vader Chirino or Fel Chirino, both very strong lists. Um, you basically have your Ace and Vader, and then a guy in Chirino who's basically guaranteed hits with Gunner. He can do a lot of evading, or I mean, a lot of outmaneuvering, because he's got a 360 arc. He's not concerned about where he's facing. He's got the full range of his dial. He's not going to be stressed from push the limit or anything. And he's got that engine upgrade too, so it really makes him harder to lock him down. Now, defensively, He's a bit weak if you can get some shots on him, especially get some crits on that big juicy 12 hole. But in terms of like these two ship uh, builds, this is like, if you have a two ship build, this is exactly what you don't want to face because that Rebel Captive really will be annoying. And I believe both players have it, yes. Morgan has it too. So as you can see, pretty identical list. The Darth Vader's are completely identical, except Morgan has Predator and instead of Adrenaline Rush. 
And then he's running Oiken instead of Chirino with uh, Predator instead of VI and uh, Dauntless. Uh, Dauntless got a huge buff with the Errata. Basically, if you do a green move, uh, means you don't take the stress from it. A pretty huge buff, I feel like. Gonna make it a lot more worthwhile card for uh, for only two points. I think it's pretty damn good for all you guys. Even without Oiken, really. Because it'll help you a lot in those fur balls, But definitely on Oiken. Any guy running Oiken uh, from now on, I feel like that's pretty much a, as a must-get as something along the lines of like auto thrusters or something. Uh, but when it comes to end game, I mean, I'd be su I'd really be surprised if we don't see decimator on decimator, which you know is kind of boring. That's why I was saying I hope he I was hoping for a bit of a different matchup. But um, all you guys out there thinking about a regional list, uh, this should give you an idea of what two of the best players alive feel like is a pretty strong one. And I know Vader might not be available, but I feel like Fell is pretty comparable. Whisper, eh. Uh, we've definitely seen a lot of uh, drawback in the number of players playing that. Um, but if you feel like you're a strong Phantom pilot, then I still think it's pretty good, but... Uh, I think most guys would agree. And you know, really, again, two of the best players alive, really two of the best Phantom players alive, Morgan, to make it through that minefield of players in the World Championship, so many swarms, so many fat falcons, to get through with a whisper is very impressive. And he, he did ultimately lose to a Han at the end, but just to make it through that gauntlet of falcons, there were, I believe there were 13 fat falcons in the final uh, 32, which is crazy. Um, so to make it through with a whisper, and so many lists are just built around defeating you. Uh, just an absolute incredible, incredible feat. Um, Star Slinger. Look at all these. No more messages, please. Uh... All right, so I'm going to invite um, a boy, Tyler. Star Slinger, for those of you who know him on Vassal. Let's go ahead and give him a call, get him in on these. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up, Tyler? I was I finally gave up waiting on my game. <laughs> it's like I saw everyone jump on and I was like, that that is enough. Uh do you have uh Lyle's info? I'm uh about to add him in my contact list and then I'll get him in here. Okay, cool. There's been... Yeah. All right. Hmm. Uh, I cannot figure out how to add a contact. Nothing's popping up when I say Here, uh, search add people. Skype directory. Here, I uh, I added the call if you okay, click the uh, click, click the thing. Yep. There he is. All right. Yeah, Susan. Hey, buddy. All right. All right. I think we're good to go. We are good to go. So, I just did a bit of a 
monologue broke down the lists and the accomplishments of uh, these two esteemed players, so you guys can uh, chime in with any of your pregame thoughts before we get started. Uh, did you have, like, two hours to go over all the crap they won? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's see. Uh, most notably, Morgan, Aussie national champ, 2014 world runner-up. <clears throat> uh, and then he won that. He won a big tournament in Australia in Wave 5. I think they call it, like, the Big Day Out or something. And then Dallas Parker, you know, he's got a couple of store championships, no doubt. 2013 runner-up. And then, of course, our Team Covenant Open... Uh, current reigning champion. I, I'm so mad about that. I apparently just missed the week that people like were posting about the uh, the sign up for that. Oh so yeah, I've just been busy and yeah. And I like I just log into Team Covenant one day and I was like, oh hey, I wonder. Oh hey, they're gonna do an open again. And apparently it's yeah. like entrance is closed. Here are the matches. Yeah, well, I think it sounds like Theorist is gonna get the Galactic Cup running once it's over. So yeah. Oh, and I, I got to, uh, I got to avenge my, uh, my loss, and that. Yeah. So in terms of the two players here, I think that we're looking at two guys are they're just at the top of the game. I mean, effectively they finished second and third in the world last year. I mean, Tex was one dice roll away from making the finals and beating Morgan in the semis at Worlds. I actually saw that game in person. It was an incredible game. And uh, so, what so, was I mean, what was the exact? End game, so and for those who weren't there, it was basically uh, Morgan's Whisper with a few ties versus Texas Tie Swarm, and uh, Tex almost managed to box Whisper in with his ties. Couldn't quite do it. Whisper got out, and then she uh, she just went on a kill spree as she does against Tie Fighters, and uh, Tex nearly survived it. Like he it was an amazing bit of flying. Like Whisper was just on a tear. She was out in the open. And uh, there's some amazing moves by Tex, but he ended up losing by a single TIE fighter in the end. Mm. It was very close. Um, and I also say that I uh, went and I was in Sydney about a month and a half ago. And so Morgan met me at his local game store and we played uh, a game of X-Wing. And then afterwards we went out for a beer and uh, and had an excellent time. He's a uh, a really cool dude, mm -hmm. and had fun in Sydney. So, those are my stories. <laughs> I'm sure you got better beer than uh, we gave Morgan when he was here at Worlds. In terms of matchup here, I'm going to go with a uh, uh, VT95 Invader. I think it's going to win. <laughs> that was VT. Okay. That's uh, quite a yeah. quite the uh, safe bet there. I would have to say, Susan. Yeah. Not really going out on much of a limb there, I'd have to say. Yeah, I think we're kind of looking at the new meta here in terms of... Uh, yeah, so I want to yeah, talk about that. So Nova Squadron, last episode. Uh, guys, break down what you feel is the, uh, the t top tier list. Is that correct? Yep, it did. And you, you guys feel like... You feel like just Chirino, Vader... Now it becomes that tier one, or is it really? You feel like Oiken is up there with Chirino as well? No, I mean if you look at the, the I mean, at least the data, you see that Chirino is on top. Um, he finished as the second most popular ship in store championship season, right behind. Any guesses? Uh, oh, Sutrafel. No. Really? B B B B Z. Yeah. Well, the, the most the most popular ship was the. Blue. Oh, sorry, the B wing. Yeah. Oh, well, the blue in particular. The blue squad, of course. Yeah. Um, and for a while, Cherno was just crushing everyone, and, but then the blue made a major comeback in the end. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, I think that Oiken requires a bit more thoughtful play and a, some more skill, whereas Cherno just demolishes people. I mean, he, he's, he's not as hard to play. So I think skilled players can go with something like a an Oiken, or even really any of the VT-95s. I think they're all good, frankly. I love all the pilots, including the patrol leader. Um, but I think because of Chirinau's kind of ease of play, we'll continue to see more of him than anyone else. I, I, uh, I'm kind of in this awkward spot because I keep seeing everyone wanting to talk, define the meta 
You know what I mean? Which just, I mean, it's a good thing. You want to know what, like, if you're going to a big tournament, what you expect to see. Mm-hmm. But, like, we, outside of very select few big tournaments, we haven't had a big tournament since Worlds, basically. You know what I mean? We've had a bunch of store championships. And I feel like <clears throat> that's a really, like, terrible place to take data from. Because at most you have 30 people kind of a thing, and the player skill is all across the map, right? I mean, you've got people that have are really hardcore players that play all the time, and then you get the guys that like just picked it up at Christmas, right? Like they saw this new cool game, and they picked it up, and then they heard that, oh, hey, there's a store championship close by. I'm going to go there, and I'm going to play. That's and true. so... Um, sort of differentiate by the top eight list, or the top four. Kind yeah, because like- it really depends on the tournament, right? Like, I mean... There, there are times, like, I mean, I was at tournaments myself where it was like the top four are not lists I would ever expect to see. It just happened to fall that way on that day. You know what I mean? Like, this guy got to play someone that was was new, and so his list made it a couple rounds farther than it, we would normally see. So I'm really interested to see with, like, the first regional starting to come in, like, what happens there. Yeah, because right, the assumption there is that you'll get higher quality pay, play. People are driving in. Uh, and it's also along the lines of, like, you, you have to play more games, right? Like, you're going to be playing five, maybe six games, not three and four before you get to those top cuts. Yeah. And uh, so there are a lot of, I feel like, I hate calling it a cheese list, but, like, there are very, there are quite a number of lists out there right now that are semi-popular, like, say, your Triple Squint, or uh, there's been some, like, Double Hawk Y-Wing builds for Scum out there. That like they just don't have the hit points to stand up. I don't feel like in a in a big tournament, where you can have that one game where you just roll poorly and, and your crap dies right away. It's funny you mention that because a triple squint won uh, a regional, I believe, last weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not saying it can't happen. I just don't feel like it's going to be like this dominant list kind of a thing. I feel like it's going to have, it'll be one of those lists that has its day. And, you know, when someone's really flying it well, that kind of thing. And then they're going to go to another tournament the next, you know, month. And not even be in the top half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that your point about, like, trying to define the meta is an interesting one because, you know, it's hard to do. And and a lot of it's affected by kind of other characteristics like, you know, how many minutes are played. Oh, I mean, yeah, 100%. For the store, store championship season, I think we saw a lot of two-ship lists because they're safe in a 16-minute game. Sure. But coming into a 75-minute regional, I think... The two ship lists aren't as good. Yeah. Well, and you also got to remember, for half of the store championships, if not more, we were on wave five only. We didn't have wave six in there. So, like, you you got to see all those those decimators, all those super dashes, that kind of thing, and you just didn't have auto thrusters yet, and that was a big deal there. You know what I mean? But I think kind of returning to the meta question, I mean, I think some things are sort of like going to be patently obvious, like when the raider comes out and all the incredible oh man ants hit. I'm so happy. A huge, a huge rise in the number of tie advance. It just seems yeah. kind of categorically true, right? Sure. And so you can say in terms of the meta, at least in its observable characteristics, that tie advance will probably feature heavily. Well, so the, and so that actually so that gets like another point that I wanted to bring up, especially like on in the meta and that what um, you will see ships that show up in very large numbers, right? So like your your bee swarms, your things like that, like in the tie advanced, Four it's ge- it's generally speaking whatever is new and shiny shows up a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that's good. It's just there's a bunch of like everyone wants to play it, right? I mean that's that's it's the new stuff in the game. You want to you want to try it out, right? And, I think that's kind of my point though, about trying to define the meta is yeah. that popularity has to be considered as well. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, or shiny newness. <laughs> Indeed, shiny newness. Yeah, personally, I'll be glad when the kind of mint wears off of Dash, Dash's coin. You know, like what's funny is, so I've, you know, I've talked to you know people from a lot of different areas and whatnot, and uh, like I saw nothing but super dashes at every store championship. I'm talking like half the lists were dashing something. Yeah, those things are annoying. And. Uh, but, like, other people were like, I didn't see a single dash. And, like, you know, out on the West Coast and stuff like that, like, that's just not what they play out there, you know? And so you get that very localized local meta kind of thing yep. where it's just, I know in central Illinois, there's a lot of good dash players. And so you have to deal with that. Yeah. Blair, what's your uh, meta like in terms of? Oh, uh, uh, let's, this? well, yeah, first, first store championship, it was kind of all over. Um, and, you know, another thing I want to touch on real quick Tyler, how you were talking about the store championship season, S&V dropped 
kind of right smack in the middle of that and auto thrusters you got to also remember the whisper errata also had a pretty big effect on that well that was after the store champion season was done though and it was right about at the end but yeah some, some store championships did manage to enjoy the uh the whisper nerf yeah it was that yeah. was that was curious too because they were, that was supposed to be after the uh the last day that's mm. why they picked that day. That's why they picked April 15th. Was uh, Store Champs were supposed to be done April 3rd or something like that? Uh, yeah, but, you know, results keep pouring in. Sure. Like... Absolutely. Um, but anyway, yeah, first one, it was just kind of all over the place. I faced, it was like four Bs and Chewy, then a Fat Han and Corrin, then Whisper, Chirino, and then Dash, Kian. And then the, the top cut, I just had two rematches. Second one... It was like triple all triple uh, interceptors with ATs, and then I was fell whisper Vader or Doom Shuttle, I mean, and then a uh, uh, panic attack, and then a uh, tie swarm, and then the last one I went to, I played like it was a marathon. They did five rounds of Swiss and then a cut to eight, and so I faced like seven unique lists, I think, and I swear to Christ, uh, five of them were Rebel Swarm. Rebel Swarm slash Control. I never faced four Bs and a Z, but so many people had that, you know, the R3A2 Y-Wing with the Ion. Some had BTL, some didn't, and then, you know, Tactician B-Wing, Ion B-Wing. Uh, those were absolutely everywhere. I was absolutely stunned at the amount of that. So, yeah, it was kind of all over the place. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't feel like my localized meta is that strong like the Seattle area there's a couple of pretty good players but there's no one really up on a big level I feel like someone who's gonna you know make a final eight run at Worlds although if you guys know Richard Sue he actually used to live yeah. around here and he he made the final eight yeah. I know you played him and beat him at Nationals Tyler but yeah he uh he so he came up to the campaign against cancer he um, did. saw him and Dom play an amazing yeah that was, was such a stupid game. good match. That game blew my mind. Yeah, it was. That was a really tight match. Yeah, he, Richard nearly took out that swarm. I was yeah. in, like, because you know that Rich, the list that Richard flows like an variant of it's a stress variant of uh, Spanish nationals, mm -hmm. um, and it basically you just substitute one of the blues with a gold, you know, with the stress bot and the ICT and the title, um, and he he I, I mean the swarm is kind of the enemy of that list in many ways, but he nearly beat it. Dom yeah. had to roll like three rounds in a row. He had to have some pretty amazing rolls to survive it. It was three straight, like three natural evades with Hal Runner, right? Yeah. But yeah, it was a pretty sick, oh. sick matchup. Yeah. <laughs> it went to time and it was like, you know, there was like three wounded TIE fighters versus uh, what, like a blue, I think left or something like that. It was, it was, it was if the, the last TIE fighter died, he would have been, he would have had him on points, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I mean, it was that tight of a matchup. Yeah. Anyways, um, well, you always got Vassal. Yeah. Yep. That is strong enough here. Yeah, and but really, you like you were saying, Tyler, we haven't had a good gauge. Really, the only big, big tournament, and it really wasn't even post Wave 4 because it kind of happened before and after Worlds was the Team Covenant Open. That's really been our best yeah. barometer for what... And even and that is kind of dated now because yeah, we have so SNB much that's changed. and yeah, they did they did that errata. And one other thing, theorists talked about this is like there's a reason you see Fell and not Tur. There's a reason you see Corn and not Eton as much. It's because pilot skill matters, and I think that's a big thing of why you see so much Chirino and not as much Oiken. But one thing about Oiken, I feel like with the new errata, I think Dauntless really got a nice buff there. With basically you get a so, free free action from a green move i think humorously that's, huge. that's not a buff at all that's how the card reads everyone was screwing it up oh okay yeah. well <laughs> i did not know that myself no, to be honest i i didn't either i was playing uh hothy on vassal one night and he had uh oiken out and was like no this is actually how this is supposed to run like and it's because huh. it was like when they were designing it they were using the uh the night beast timing mechanic and okay. i was like who the fuck plays night beast yeah like who's who's ever gonna call you that call you on that like where you're just like oh no you can't because like night beast can't take the free focus action if he's stressed and then reveals the green yeah yeah hmm. well, um in any event i feel like i feel like it really helps two two points for because that was the big thing i felt 
about Oiken that wasn't so strong is like it's an okay Blair, ability. Uh, um, but the dials have been revealed and the game has started. Oh, all right. Well, here we go. So, uh, so what's happening here is that we're seeing typical uh, play from Morgan, which is that he will auto block Chirinel into Vader um, to buy time to figure out where um, where Tex is going. So um, Matt does this in almost every game. Yeah. Yeah, no, I uh, I am pretty. I, I'm excited to see like more people experiment with Dauntless now, though. I think it'll be a, uh, I think it'll be interesting. You'll see uh, you'll see that come in, a lot more. Yeah. Another point here, by the way, is that he's likely going to do a one forward with uh, Vader, and then, uh, um, keep the block going, and he'll basically just turtle there in the corner and wait for Tex to come at him. I believe he already did. I th- I believe Morgan has initiative. So, yeah. So, so Vader's already gone. Yeah. Um, any any opinions on this style of opening? I hey, I personally don't mind it because I basically do the exact same thing with my shuttles. Only I use a defender to block it, and then uh, then turn out it, if it's going to be one of those where I need to see where people are. Mm-hmm. I know some people have been. Uh, I don't know. I don't think anyone's ever been annoyed with this specifically, uh, but like fortressing in general, you'll always hear like the the rage on the internets about fortressing, and mm-hmm. uh, I'm just like, it's never won anything. Like, if it was a if it was a like a really big deal that could shut, you know what I mean? Like, it was very powerful, or you know, broke the game in some way. FFG would release something for it, and it just doesn't. Yeah, I will say that it's an interesting tactic with this type of two ship opening because. It buys you time, like basically committing to a vector mm-hmm. can be very expensive when you only have two ships. Yeah. And um, with a two ship, I think it's even it's particularly good. You get the line that you want. Like you, you get to run the asteroids. You get that initial that line up really easily. Blair, what do you think about this style of opening? Well, yeah, it's pretty much what Morgan did exactly in his last game. The big thing now is going to be. Uh, when he does decide to break the fortress, and I, I know from watching Tex, he's just going to be extremely judicious with Vader. He's not. He's just basically going to try to keep him alive as long as he can. Because really, these two ships, they really have pretty much equal firepower. And so really, Vader is just the glass cannon here. I think you're going to see most player. Each of them would ideally like to take out Vader, ASAP. So I think you're going to see both players try to be a bit cautious with them. So the big thing is, I mean, when is Morgan decide to break his fortress? Is he going to do it this turn, or is he going to keep waiting? Um, and it's going to be interesting the way they got those asteroids, those three in the middle. If and you know, it looks like Chirino's heading south. Is Tex going to break those two up, or is he going to bring them down that south alley right there? Well, I mean, Vader is maneuverable enough that you could probably pick either either road. Um, so, but you're right. Tex is a very conservative player. And, in fact, I think we're going to see Vader staying reasonably close to chair now. One thing I will point out, um, especially with, like, an opening such as, like, with what a... Uh... Um, with what Morgan's doing here is realistically this isn't that much different than just K turning back and forth for a couple turns. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and that's why. Yeah, that's I another reason why I just I don't mind it. In yeah, any way. exactly. It. I mean, it's really the same thing, in essence. So, I yeah, but, I don't think it's really so bad that FFG is going to be have to say something. One thing I was I was reading an interview with Alex Davy. He was saying. He really felt like the the game was eventually going to have to when they when he first created the game or when it was first created it felt like they were going to have to put some sort of objective in to prevent players from doing that just playing super passive but yeah it's really really not much of a, an issue at all of players just fortressing up like that in my opinion I will say that it's a little different from the K turn in that K turning actually introduces drift in terms of your position because um, you're actually moving your ships around, and then you, 
once you K, you got to do a green so you can K again. So your ability to kind of maintain like perfect uh, kind of positioning in anticipation of, of where, where the attack vector should be is a little altered. It's not as good as this way. Are you talking? Okay. I, I, I kind of get that. I feel like it's, it would be, uh, it's worse in person, right? Cause you're, when you're physically moving on Vassal, everything being perfect like that's not, you can, you can kind of line that up. Yeah. So while we're waiting on this, have you guys thought of any, uh, cheeky and fun builds with, uh, for the new tie advanced pilots? Oh, uh, no. you know, Vader is <laughs> just unbelievably awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I was watching it and actually it was a TC aces game. Uh, it was Dom and someone, I can't remember who, but the thing is he commented, it's like, sometimes you're not really sure what to do with Vader though, is because if he gets caught in a bad spot, or a spot where he could potentially take a few shots. Do you take that lock just because it's so valuable with ATC? Do you turtle up? Uh, it seems like sometimes you're not quite sure what you're going to do with him as opposed to someone like Fell, who is it's a little more yeah. clear cut with him sometimes. So right. that's one issue I've found with him. But I feel like uh, it's pretty damn strong. The I'm kind of interested, or I'm surprised that I haven't seen so many Sensor Jammer list so in the that's, TCAs. That's, is? Go ahead. That's that's my that's my build coming out like with the uh, the new guys. I really want to see or so I'm thinking uh, uh it's a triple eight. So it's Jax with stealth and auto thrusters and PTL. Uh Storm, the uh pilot skill six uh tie advanced that uh takes away your range mods at one range one. Uh-huh. With a sensor jammer and VI to push him to eight. Mm -hmm. And then Kagi with an engine upgrade, a rebel captive and also a sensor jammer. Mm. So, like, I don't know if it's actually going to be good in any way, shape, or form, but you're going to be shooting terrible shots all game long. The only no thing actions. about those lists, though, is it's real predicated on staying in formation, and it, it, it's kind of one of those that after, like, the initial shots, if Jax, like, gets away from the anim the bulk of the enemy, or if, it, if, they have, if they're running something like three three squints like he's really only gonna be able to go after one if they really spread it out is the thing sure um but the, uh, i believe so what, wasn't that me and you tyler that played in round one of the epic, <laughs> of the epic game? yeah oh my god that was such a pain in the ass i had <laughs> kyle katarn and he had motherfucking carnor jacks and i was sort of running a list kind of like that where it was just defense bigs so i had to jam him all in real tight and I didn't have a whole lot of 360 to be able to with be able to deal with Jax. That was before auto thrusters, I believe. And so he was yeah. able to just get behind. He was really the MVP of the game, really. If it yeah. had been like anyone else, I probably would have sure. won. But because I because I think it also it shut down like uh, R5 P9 on Luke for uh -huh. a couple of turns as well. Yeah, no, it was. But, well, and that and that's that's basically the I've never been able to get in a hundred points, a list that I like with Kagi and Jax. Uh -huh. They're like two of my favorite ships, but they just, it's what else do you put with them? Right? Like what's that third? Cause you only have like 28 points yeah. roughly. And Hey, there's another defensive <laughs> tie advanced that dicks with the enemy and uh -huh. their ability to do stuff. Yep. Well, initially I haven't really looked at, uh, the new, the couple new guys they dropped, but I was, I just feel like the Tempest with that accuracy corrector is, really boss now and i was just thinking once it drops two tempest with a accuracy corrector doom shuttle with backstabber and then i've basically got 18 points to do with whatever i like i was thinking maybe just run a scimitar with a seismic to help deal with swarms uh, i could just run one squint i kind of tool with that just a little bit but i haven't played with it a whole lot so maybe. i know they're decent i just still have nightmares of playing sozin and the aces round like two or whatever, where I had three of them, and I just couldn't do damage for like four turns in a row. Yeah, there was also uh, Morgan and Dom actually played a game, and it came. I watched the first half of it, but it I ended guess. up being like a four-hour game, and it came yeah, down it to five or five and a half. It was brutal. Five, yeah. It was five and a half hours. I think so. Yeah. Oh my god. Like yeah. It started seven, and they finished close to one. Wow. And it was basically the last, what, three, three and a half hours 
was just a couple of Tempests chasing around Fell, right? Yeah, I mean, Dom got it into a Vader plus three Tempest endgame versus Fell, and uh, Fell beat him. Fell oh. took it down. Yeah, so that is the concern, is that those accuracy correctors you know, they have no hope almost of punching through a guy like Soonter, but overall, pretty strong jousting tips, I feel like, now. And got some decent maneuverability, too. So, looks yeah, like... Yeah, I think the trick is that you, you pair up those guys with, a, like, a Doom Decimator or something. Mm -hmm. So that when you go up against Vader, the, mm -hmm. the, the they can, you know, punch away the VT-95. Yeah, they, they're the perfect point fill-in for... Uh, do you remember uh, um, Dark Templar's list in the TC Open? That he ran against... Uh, um, he, he only played a couple of games, but he ran it against Dom for one of them, and it was a uh, engine Vader patrol leader and then two PTL uh, sabers. Yes. Hmm. And so you rip the sabers out and throw in tempests or storms with, hmm. you know, accuracy corrector or uh, I mean even um, the advanced targeting computer at that point. You could fit a lot of stuff in there. And it's kind of that it's that same perfect point fill that that I feel like Empire's really needed for a while. That like you don't have two ships that fit in that mid 40 point range like you can you can do like three ships or you can do one ship but you don't have two and really for that 21.2 sort of that mid tier they really haven't had a whole lot either that's basically it, it's it's been the shuttle like if you were yeah. really good running a shuttle like you could run that but outside if you don't want to run a shuttle in that you know what i mean it doesn't fit with whatever you're trying to do yeah you, you don't have anything it looks like Morgan went for the fortress once again and texted a one and a boost with Chirino coming down that left side, holding Vader back. Hmm. So quite the slugfest. Uh, <laughs> <it out. laughs> I, 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 I hope it doesn't come down to... De I mean, it's going to be interesting, Decimator on Decimator. I feel like it's... I really don't see how it cannot come down to... This decimator decimator endgame. That's going to be interesting. I so I almost want to. So the problem with your decimator shots is you've got a Vader, you've got Vader right. So Vader can very easily just focus evade after the turn he sets up his target lock. Pretty much every turn, right? Yep. So granted, they have Gunner, and it's not an auto thrusters issue. So it's not really a wasted shot, but it's you hate throwing dice and missing twice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's just such because that just puts you so far behind the curve of killing mm -hmm. that stupid sixteen hit point ship. Yeah. So yeah, and, there and definitely is a chance. Chirino, um, if he gets in close, he's gonna want to be shooting Oiken because he's gonna get those free crits in yep. all day long, and that's just gonna be a terrible thing. I actually had a game uh, at our our local store. I was playing a buddy of mine, and uh, it wasn't I forget who or I was probably a Mangler Cannon on Vestry, but it was uh, not only did I injured pilot Oiken to where he lost his ability to bump, but then I gave him the st is it stunned pilot to where stunned if he pilot. runs into people, he takes damage. Yep. So, like, I reverse Oikened him. Huh. That's good. Well, yeah, those... Chirino definitely has the ability to do some work on Oiken here. Once he strips those shields, it's just going to be basically guaranteed crit every time. Right, right. If it's something bad, that could be big trouble for Morgan. So, it looks okay. like he's breaking it. Yeah, well, he but he he left the uh, he left oh, the. Oh, he did leave still, Hoyken, so. Yep. Still taking it pretty slow. This will be interesting because if he banks left with Oiken next turn and then hard lefts with Vader, they'll still be in a semi in a semi formation. Mm -hmm. Kind of sweep around. Tex is more or less committed to where he's going. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was my buddy Mike that I was actually playing. He just texted me that I was mocking his pain. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> so I will say, and this uh, I'm going to go back to uh, our regular or our earlier uh, talk about the uh, the different meta and whatnot. And uh, with the with the store championships being just I, once again, I feel like a terrible place to look at like what's going to be popular and what's going to actually work, right? 
Um, the first store championship that I won, the final match was I was flying Stealth Auto Thruster PTL Fell with five Obsidians, and my opponent was running VI PTL Auto Thruster Tycho with five Talus. Mm. So it was like this 100% mirror matchup. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he also had a Proton Rocket. Like, that was the other three points he had. So, and basically the match came down to the fact that he missed the Proton Rocket. Mm. He he took the shot um, without a target lock because he didn't feel like I wasn't going to let him. He basically K-turned when I, while not stressed, and then boosted into range one and focused. Eh. And I just didn't see that coming. It was a really good move. And then just didn't roll well on the shot, and I was able to avoid it. And then I ignored Tycho for a while and killed some Talos with Fell. You know what I mean? Like, Fel, Fel is better at that than Tycho is at killing TIE Fighters. Yeah. But I don't expect to see Tycho and five Talos showing up at major tournaments normally. Mm -hmm. It just happened that both of those style lists work really well when there's a bunch of Mangler Cannon dashes and Heavy Laser Cannon dashes in yeah. the field. Certainly. So, uh, so in, when you're looking at Major Juggler... Um, does it talk, so it talks about what ships are most popular. Is there any data on, uh, the most popular pilot skills? Uh, no, but JT Punk has some of that data. Um, that's actually on my backlog to kind of break out the data by pilot skill to show, I mean, you know, the theory is that we're going to see, um, a shift away from the low PS, high PS kind of polarized environment mm -hmm. and in and over to a a more immediate um type environment yeah I, like, I, cause I looked at something i can't remember where it was uh, but it it read out that two is unequivocally the most popular and it's really not even close and then it goes like nine one and then it kind of starts to even up but there's so many twos, because uh, like you said, the blue squadron pilot, the most popular, uh, and then you got so much more. You got, what do you got? You got the shuttle. Yeah, the OGP's uh, in there for sure. Uh huh. Uh, bandits. Gold. So. And, yeah, lots of bandits. They're gold as well. I mean, it's so yeah. it's it's all the rebel small ships, uh -huh. right? But now with the raider, oh. I think we're gonna start seeing some tempest even in there too now. So I feel like. Uh, that talk about Talas and Obsidians, uh, I'm kind of been in the mindset of whenever I'm going Swarm now, if I can get that boost, and I haven't really play tested that a whole lot, but I feel like um, I want to, I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts and whether you think it's worthwhile, because it's really, I feel like for value, those Talas and Obsidians, for one point, that's a pretty good value, I feel like, and especially to get over that too, um, but I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, I, I agree. Definitely agree that. I mean, the question is, my I think really more. Do you want to be a blocker? Do you want to play a blocking game? In which mm -hmm. case, you, you, I mean, you've got both options. You can go with the academy pilots and block all those uh, annoying B wings, or you can go PS3 um, and shoot first. Yeah, and I think there was a post on. I don't remember if it was a post about swarms, but it kind of turned into that, and. I think Theorist was saying, I can't remember who Swarm was he was talking about, but if he feels like that's the optimal one, it was like something, I think it actually was something like Tex, what Tex ran at Worlds is like a Black Squadron must draw their fire, and then like two yeah. Academies for blockers, and then the rest Obsidians, and then How with the whole upgrade, I think is what it was. Yeah, this is a Wave 1 list. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, and pretty ideal too, because you get those Academies out first to jam them up, and then typically you're going to have that pilot skill boost, and some good that black squadron was draw their fire and then the whole upgrade on howl is so awesome i've found so. yeah yeah i uh i still i i try to uh i try to run ptl on howl more often than the whole because i feel like if i can get it two turns or in a if i can get the evade focus for two turns kind of a thing it, it pays for itself more but yeah I've I've definitely seen the hole be better there because I've I've definitely gotten myself killed by stressing myself when I shouldn't have and things like that. There's always that give and take there. But that's I mean that's it's uh it's funny that uh, and I think it's a kind of a testament to the game design that like we saw 
uh, Tex was basically running a wave one list at, at Worlds, and so was uh, Nick Jones, who was top 32 as well, and lost to Paul Heaver in the first round. So, you know, who, who knows how far he could have gone had, you know, he not matched that up with uh, Hal Runner, Backstabber, Five Obsidians. Yeah. yeah. Like, no upgrades, no nothing else. Like, here's my seven TIE Fighters. This, let's go play the game. Yeah, uh, Dom actually brought a TIE Fighter list to... Um campaign against cancer in south bend and took first in a 64 player field with hell runner hull upgrade ptl three obsidians three academies yep. so it's the i mean they they always call it the uh, the shark of yep. uh of x-wing yep. and it's kind of there for a reason right like uh-huh. and it was uh was I can't remember, was it keith wilson the uk national champ or, I, or is that wrong he he made he lost to uh, Morgan in the final four at Worlds as well, and I believe that was just a wave one, a tie swarm list as well. I don't think he had any upgrades on it post that. Yeah, I think he actually lost to Tex in the top eight. Well, some who was running the swarm that lost to Morgan, and wasn't it the final four match? That no, Morgan... I think I, yeah, that was Tex. Oh, it was. Yeah. Okay. I... Yeah, basically, like Tex took down. Keith Swarm, and then the next round, uh, um, he got his matchup against Morgan. Okay. So. Yeah, and the other thing about Ty Swarms, too, is I, like, wave four or five, uh, the Whisper was really kind of the thing you were, you were scared of with the Swarm, because your really only method was blocking, and against a real crafty Whisper player like a Morgan Reed, they're going to be able to anticipate that coming. That was basically why. A big reason he was able to make it so far is that guys kept going for that trap, and he was able to keep anticipating it and getting away. And I feel like the swarm, that was the one thing we were really scared of, was Whisper, because with those two dice, it's just hard to punch through that. And now with the errata of Whisper, I feel like Swarm's really, it's really gotten even a little bit stronger, because you don't have to worry about Whisper so much. I guess for, in a way, uh... I mean, on the counter argument to that was, uh, I mean, there was a whole number of swarms that were in the top 32. And if you talk to those guys, they played against a number. It wasn't like they just missed phantoms. You know what I mean? Getting, getting there in their seven games. Like they all had phantom matchups oh, I'm sure they that, did. They, that they all, that they all won. Uh-huh. Um, and it's just one of those things that I feel like the really good swarm players just evolved in the sense that like, they just figured out how to play against it. You know what I mean? Like it's not a good matchup. Right. Like it's not a, it's not like a, oh, I wouldn't even say it's at a 50 50 if you're equal skill level. It's maybe 60 40. Uh-huh. But you typically have that. I mean, other lists have that as well. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, you bring, you bring like a, a rebel swarm of some kind and you see, you see a, a couple of little interceptors out there. Like you're just, you want to hate life as you're <laughs> trying to pin down, you know, Suter or Jax, anybody yeah. like that. So, so uh, I don't ever feel like it was, uh, I don't feel like it was as bad as people want to make it out to be. Mm hmm. Um, I won't say that it was ever good. <laughs> it wasn't a fun matchup, but at the same token, like I, uh, for a long time, especially before the errata and then people defending the errata, it was the, well, there was no way to win against that list with, you well, know, yeah. list X, Y, or yeah. Z. So that's I, just, yeah. But overall, did you guys feel like the errata was needed or deserved or do you think yeah. like the game, <laughs> do you I'm think the, the game is better with say, it? Uh, I say 100% no. It was not needed in the slightest. Yeah, I think the real problem was that the defender was broken. Yeah, it, right. He was so good. They should have nerfed it. I mean, that's <laughs> what Tyler's been telling me. That. I uh, and not in the, my my defender love aside, um, I feel like the uh, or I think I talked to you. I, th- I think I talked to Lyle about this at uh at uh CAC, but the Phantom was the biggest predatory ship in uh-huh. the game uh-huh. based on skill value right so like if me and you match up and you're a better player than i am and you bring a phantom and i don't bring a phantom counter i am hosed uh-huh. like i'm not gonna win but if we're of equal skill and i bring a well-built list and you bring a phantom and my well-built list doesn't need to have a phantom counter in it i just need it needs to not be six hawks right um like i can still win that matchup like i'm not gonna win it every time but like there are things you can do there are methods you can in how you play and how you fly, you can win that. Um, and I feel like a, there was a large portion of the of the X-Wing community that just didn't want to put the time in for it. And 
that also go, I mean, that also is the same thing with the, uh, like player skill, right? Like, you know, the people that are really good at this game that consistently all, I mean, so you, we've got Morgan and Tex that we're watching right now. They're playing again. Guess what? They've been in the championships of multiple tournaments. Why? Mm-hmm. They probably play this game pretty frequently. You know what I mean? They get lots of games in. And I feel like when you get lots of games oh. in like that, you start learning how to play that. Sorry to interrupt, but um, it's on. Yes. Yeah, it is. And we're Morgan Uh-oh. goes That's... super aggressive, and it looks like he caught Dallas. I don't think Dallas expected that. That's going to be a pretty crucial bump. Yeah, it yep. is. Agreed. Because Vader has the, uh, the target lock on him yep. as well. And that is... Okay, which, who has which Vader? Is Morgan's the one with a uh, predator, or is Morgan's the one Morgan with Morgan uh... has predator. Okay, so that's an even worse shot then. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be taking a predator. Yep. With no actions. Granted, he's got the two shields. It's not the worst thing in the world. I don't know if he's going to want to pop his uh, adrenaline rush like next turn, like this early. I don't. I don't play with one shot cards frequently enough to know like when to use them. Um, it's going to be dependent. If Chirino just goes like two forward, I think he's going to be right blocking that four yeah, K. So sure. yeah, he wouldn't he be able to. And that really hurts too now because Morgan. I'd be surprised if Morgan doesn't just ram him with Loiken. I think that's almost a given that he's going to do that. So really, Vader is going to be. If he takes a couple here. Could be in a bad way. Yeah. I yeah, th- we're Loiken's value really coming through now. Now, with Vader taking that evade, I think you're probably going to see Tex just go for Oiken here, I'd imagine. He's got the range one as well. Yep. See, it's interesting. Like, I would, at this point, maybe I throw the dice. I'm like, well, if I can get lucky, I get a couple good shots on uh, on on Morgan's Vader. So, it up. here's a question for you. And I, I've thought about this multiple times, but I don't run gunner sh- ships enough to really think it through. Um, so you've got Rack in a pretty good position. He's going to get free damage on, on Oiken. Do you take the pot shot at Vader first? And if you miss and don't burn the evade token, then throw it back on Oiken for your second to get the guaranteed damage? That's very interesting because... But the only thing is... His Vader will have to shoot first because I get where you're like so you could strip the evade for Vader, but since Texas no. Vader, no, uh, Rack's at ten. Yeah, Rack is at ten. He's gonna shoot before Vader. Yeah. So they. If you're talking about you want to strip that evade, well, that really doesn't really do a whole lot for you unless you're stripping it. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and I'm also if you strip the evade, then you exactly. fire at him again. Yes. If you yeah. don't strip the evade, yes. then take the free damage. Uh-huh. So. It looks like he's not going to do it, but I totally, I get what you're saying, and yeah. I I don't know if that's the right call. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just one of those, I, I, yes. you know, armchair quarterback sit back and uh, and go, maybe you do that. I, I, I feel like I probably would have because, I mean, if he takes it, well, you got to hit on Vader, and you still get to, that's, you get to keep your target lock on Oiken free, but then, yeah, I've, eh, interesting. That would definitely be... I feel like you can make an argument either way on that, but yeah, right. I don't know which. I don't like. I said I don't know what the right answer is. I'm just curious. Because when I so I was actually um, running a defender uh, decimator for a while, um, and basically with the beefed up points to the defender, you don't have room for the gunner on board. So I didn't have these hard questions. Because my, my wave five counter, yeah, wave five like meta counter list was actually a, a, a VI rack with a rebel captive and engine upgrade and then Rexler with a hull upgrade and lone wolf. Because mm. rack could go chase down fell or whisper or anybody like that and Rexler could just tear through the other decimator. Wow, he rolled it. He okay. went. For it. Yeah, he went yeah. for Cherno. Interesting. <laughs> I'm surprised at that. I, I mean, am too. 
I guess maybe he was just concerned that Vader would get some good evades because he's at range three, but he's got the lock. What what was Oiken's action? So we can have a target uh, lock out there. He boosted. Oh, okay. Yeah. And maybe just Morgan does not want to split fire, and he's going to take this chance to strip. Yeah. Strip rack down. Yeah. Oh, that's snap. a good roll. <laughs> Is that naked? Yeah. Yeah, that was naked. I, if that's a bad crit. Yeah. This is going to leave a mark. This, so this is this is one of those things where you uh in your what was that? Minor explosion. Okay. That's not the worst crit in the world. Yep. You'll live with that. Um, Dodges too. Re, I feel like the decimator on decimator fights the two battleships passing in the, the sea as they just slug it out. Is re I mean, it almost always comes down to the, the crits, right? Like, who yep. gets the shitty crit? Mm -hmm. uh, they both have gunner, so blinded pilot doesn't really mean anything. Um, but, like, you know, you get the uh, weapon malfunction. That's probably or, the big or, one. Yeah. Either that or injured pilot, uh, I would say. Yeah, lose it. yeah, injured pilot for sure. And, and, and granted, uh, the... Um, um, minor explosions, direct hits. I mean, you get enough of those. Those they, mm -hmm. they cut through you pretty quickly, so that's always a pain. You know one that would potentially would suck would be if you got a thrust control fire because you're already going to be stressed from Rebel Captive. Yeah. That situation will now, and this came up in Morgan's semifinal match against Kinetic. It came down to an 88 against Oiken and a wounded Vader. The 88... They had a Segnors, the stress, he had a shot on Oik and he decided not to take it. Don't want that double, that dreaded right. double stress. Right, he didn't stress. want a double stress, yeah. On, uh, on like, 80, on, on G's or, uh, you know, anybody that's, like, uh, PTL squints, things like that, that's that's a terrible thing to deal with. Yep. Um, on, like, especially Cherno, like, pff, pile on the stress, I don't care. I don't need, I don't need actions. I have a mini focus for a feat, or for his passive anyway. Yep. And Gunner, if, you know, you really roll badly. And Predator, too. Well, not for... Yeah, that's uh, Predator Not for, uh so They're kind of both Texas. in the same spot, right? Yeah. Like, Ra uh, Rear Admiral has his, his passive, and then Oiken's got the yep. Predator. So, yeah, I feel like Oiken has got to go for the Ram here on Vader. Uh, the one forward. Uh then the question, do you want a Dauntless there? Because, again, you take that stress, if you decide to fire at Rack, which kind of got that indication that he will since he went for him with both those guys there, it, like we just said, it'd be that double stress. So yeah. I feel like Oiken's got a ram here. Don't you guys agree or not? Go either yeah, way. I, I, would, I would ram here for sure. Yeah, I don't know about Dauntless. Um I mean, realist. He has it on there, so he's planning on using it. You know what I mean? That's uh -huh. So that might not be might as well, because at the same token, he uh, realistic. He's probably going to want to shoot Vader because Vader is not going to be able to get out of range one of him. Uh, but then, then again, I, I don't know. I don't. He's he's already got into hole on rear on chair now, so he might want to burn that as quickly as he can. This is where that initiative bid by Tex. He hopes it pays off for him having his yeah. Vader move last. Right. Morgan... That's. I mean, that's the thing, right? So if Morgan burns Rear Admiral down, I mean, that's still he's probably trading Oiken for him, mm -hmm. and so then he's still in this end game where the other Vader moves after him. He doesn't shoot quite as well, but. But here in this in this spot, what are you thinking? I feel like got a kind of one left bank. With Morgan, I mean, that's kind of predictable, but uh, what else could you really conceivably do if you're going to ram with Loiken anyway? Oh, with Vader? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else no, could you I, do? I would, I would do that just because it sets up nicely for... I'm Granted, so uh, Rack is going to just burn past him, right? Yeah. It's going to do a three forward or yeah. a three forward screen on that, right? I believe it is. Um, Which that's going to be a pain, but you should, in theory, have a shot on... Uh, 
I got, I, you know, I'd almost three hard turn out yeah. with Vader. And I think that's uh, what Tex like is up. thinking about. I think he's thinking, if I, he's thinking about that K thumb. Do I K and burn the rush? And maybe yeah. I can do something True. kind of fancy here. But ultimately, I think he's just going to have to do a three left turn just to get out of Vader's arc. So, so here's an interesting question on how because once again I don't I don't typically use single shot cards. Um so I'm looking up the the exact wording on adrenaline rush like when you actually get to use it. When you reveal a red maneuver, you may discard this card to treat it that maneuver as a white. Okay. So my que- my question there being depending on where he put rack, if there was a question on if he would bump or not with Vader, would he he has to basically use the card first before he figures out if he bumps. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, I believe so, because it says when you reveal. Yeah, when you reveal, yeah. It's not after so, you complete. Yeah. So we will get to see here. Looks like they're both set. This will be an exciting turn. Or at least this will be... Okay. He smashes. So this is actually really funny because I beat Morgan in the regular season of Aces and mm-hmm. he was running a very similar, he was running a, a Chirino Vader mm. and it came down to my Sunter on his Vader mm-hmm. and I had given him initiative. Mm. I, I won the role, so I, I got the choice mm-hmm. and he said he's never taking Vader without VI again <laughs> and yet here we are <laughs> and he's running well, Vader without VI. Supposedly, according to Kelvin, he went back and forth about yeah, I, seventeen said, times or something, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I, I got to I got to visit uh, Kelvin pro, uh, back uh, right before Easter. Uh, I was uh, driving through his uh, through Kansas City, and I crashed with him for the night. And uh, we were we were talking about that and everything that was getting sent back and forth. Who wanted to play what? Okay. So he's looking like he's wanting to block Rack up yep. while at the same time protecting himself. Ooh, five forward. Wow, okay. Oh, so well, he can boost out of it, so actually that's not too bad. Is he, is he touching? I don't think so. Uh, he's clear. Okay, he is just clear. Man, okay. That's pretty huge. <laughs> yeah. That would have been bad news bears had he bumped. Wait, is he going to stay there and take a shot? I is So he, I'm, I don't it, know. Well, so he's... Do you do, uh, he's taking actions. Yeah, he's got two. So he, he target locks him. That's he's fine. He's going to lock, yeah. He's going to... He's going to boost. Okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> that that, uh, that would have been suicide, I feel like, to... Because he would have got a shot on Vader, but I can't imagine he would have survived there after a Vader yeah. and Oiken shot. Yeah. Well, so the only the only reason I can feel like he would have sat there is if he was wanting to prevent Rack from bumping in. So Rack could have taken the range one shot. He would have used Vader to block him back yeah, further. Yeah, I get that. But, but, but I yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't think Tex wants to shoot at Vader is yeah. the thing. Like we said, he's kind of already committed to Oiken, and Vader's gotten evade too. So, so interesting note: uh, Oiken didn't Dauntless. He did not. Yep. You know, the only thing about this though, is I feel like right now Morgan's winning, and after we after all the dice of this round, I feel like he's still going to be in the lead. But positionally, I think Tex has got a bit of an advantage here because Oiken's kind of in a bad spot. Yeah, he's going to take a while to get yeah, back around. Yeah, it's going to take him a while to work back into it. And uh, Morgan's Vader, there's no way he's going to be able to get a shot on anyone next turn. Just going to have to bank or hard turn out yeah. of there. As opposed to Texas Vader could easily two left turn and boost to get a shot on Oiken or just 4K. And then boost focus and get a nice shot on 
Morgan's Vader, well, probably. So I feel like Morgan's Vader is going to just turn and burn, so he's going to do like a three bank, and then mm-hmm. maybe even engine to get even farther. Uh-huh. Uh, and Oiken's going to do the same thing. It's like yeah. they've, they've had the first pass. They're just going to create space, re-meet up in the corner. Yeah, I agree. But, and also I agree with you, Blair, that the positional advantage is actually with uh, with Tex now, which is yeah. So now here's the big roll. Can Rack get a crit through? Yeah. And will it be a big issue? Because he's got the pilot skill shot, right? Like, so even though he's down on hull, he's he wins the shooting war here. Yep. If there's any justice, he'll get like a natural four hit. <laughs> right. That's that is not what he needed there. Oof. No focus. Yeah. That's yeah. Brutal. No focus shown. And really. That's pretty ideal if you're more because you had no crit, and then yeah, also no you can crits. activate Isan next on. turn now. That was like the perfect roll for Morgan. Yeah. Morgan's tracking his damage cards at the top. Oh, jeez. Oh, it doesn't matter. He'll just gunner it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and Predator. Yeah, there you go. Three. That's... One that's or one hull. What's that? It's just... Oh, you got three hits, sir. Yeah, three hits. Yeah. Two, it's three. Down to seven. It's almost halfway through. Or no, he is. He's over halfway through. It doesn't... He's got the evade with uh, the Admiral. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does. So it's only two. So he's exactly half. Yeah. Uh, unfortunate for Tex. That's, that's why you bring a gunner to a decimator fight. Those rolls. Yeah, I played the uh, Adepticon. Uh, I mean, you were there at the Saturday tournament. Mm hmm. I had a uh, rear admiral with gunner and Vader. Okay. Uh, a bunch of people were flying uh, interceptors with with our thrusters. Yeah. I felt bad. What, what else did you run with it? Center. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That's pretty funny. I still I still can't believe I won the uh, the two v two with uh, was it was it Joe? Is that the guy's name? I don't remember. Basically. Uh, there was a 2v2 um, teams tournament, so it was 75 points apiece. Mm-hmm. Or, well, so it was 150 points teams tournament that no one player could have more than 80 points. So you could do like an 80-70 if you wanted to shift mm-hmm. points slightly to get to make things fit. And uh, my twos partner, so I was going to drive up Saturday. This is up in the suburbs of Chicago, and I'm in central Illinois, so I'm like a good three hours out from there. And, uh, I ended up having, I was going to originally go up for the dogfight tournament, which Sozin was talking about, which was on Friday. And I had work stuff come up. And then I was like, okay, I'll just go up for the day on Saturday. And one of my buddies that I normally play with down here is going to come up with me. And it's, it's a twos tournament. So it'll just, we'll go up there and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Well, he got called into work that Saturday morning. So like the night before. And so I just posted on like the Chicago x-wing group it's like hey i need a partner for the twos is anybody going to be up there and want to play and doesn't have anybody to play with and uh one of the local guys from chicago was like i'll be there and i don't want to play imperial assault because that was going on at the same time and uh so we met up at like nine in the morning i think i think i got up at like 5 30 to drive up there and uh hashed out a list and then ended up winning the whole thing wow so was it uh were you guys allowed to look at and talk about each other's dials so they they did let us we could look at each other's dials uh-huh. we talked about that um because you could always talk about your dials uh-huh. you just uh, in, for whatever reason you're not supposed to look at each other's dials which i don't know i guess that's kind of weird but uh i think that like that heavily helped us and the reason we won because we ran uh jackson sunter with stealth auto and ptl uh-huh. and then um five academies hal runner and hal runner with ptl 
so we had a six pack tie swarm that like you know i had three tie fighters he had three tie fighters but we ran them in formation huh. and were able to do that yeah whereas if oh, granted I, I mean it's generally a tie swarm flies right where you think it's going to go right you know you don't typically get like oh man they did a they did a three bank there instead of a two two hard turn or something like that but nobody else that we were playing against really flew it was very much like here is your list here is my list kind of a thing uh, yeah that's yeah i've really been wanting to do one of those and i talked to a guy at my local store and he said told me to email him some info about potentially doing that but that's something that sounds really fun to me. I've been wanting to do something like that for a while. What, one of the things we've been doing uh, locally down here at, uh, at a couple of the different, uh, like, uh, more, so it's not like X-Wing events, but at, like, uh, miniatures tournaments and things like that mm -hmm. that, are, that are going on, or gaming cons and that kind of stuff, is uh, we do uh, random pair 50-point teams mm -hmm. for charity. Mm -hmm. So it'll, whatever charities associated with the events. So you bring a 50-point list... And you will randomly get paired with another 50 point list. And uh -huh. it doesn't necessarily have to be Empire and Empire. Like you could get a scum or you could get a rebel list. And uh -huh. you only play one game each. Like, and then you switch partners every every round. Hmm. So, and it's always participation prizes. It's not like you're, uh, you don't get, like, they don't track your wins to like win something, right? Uh -huh. But it's, it's, it's interesting to see what like someone else brings. And then like suddenly you have a, uh, you have like Lando on your team giving you extra actions when yeah. you're scum and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So that's been a lot of fun too. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Oiken is just going to go Coming two forward. Down. He goes two forward and stashes a lock on Chirino. And it looks like uh, Tex is going to save that adrenaline rush and just do a three left turn here. Maybe a boost. So he. What was Vader's second? Did Vader boosted, didn't he? Uh, Morgan's, uh, Morgan's Vader, Vader boosted. Yes, he boosted and evaded. Okay. And I think Chirino's Chirino's gonna have a good chance to get a hit on him here. Yeah. He takes a lock in with Gunner. I think what Tex is thinking about, he's thinking, well, if I boost, I can get a nice range one or range three shot on Oiken. He's, he's already got that lock on him, so we can boost and just focus or evade. And I think, yeah. but he's worried well, if he's so going to get a shot. I'm curious if Rack's actually going to have a good shot because he's probably going to be range three. Cause he's got to go. He's going to be range three, but with the focus and his ability and Gunner, well, he's I think not going to he... have his ability at range three though. Uh, you're right. I'm he's, sorry. It's just gonna have gunner. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I think that Oiken actually should have an evade token on her, shouldn't she? No, oh, start a combat. Start a combat, yeah. Uh, start a combat. Yeah. But if I'm Tex, I go for it here. I think because it rains three through that rock. If I can take an evade after I boost, I'm probably safe. Yeah. And and he has predator I'm, on the shot too. So I mean, that's well. Uh, Morgan has predator. Uh, oh, that's right. Tex does yeah, not, yeah. but that's, still. That's right. He, he, with that crit, that ATC, yeah, I would go for it and just hope. Pray and you're it's a range good three crit. with the rock for the defense, uh -huh. so you're probably not going to take anything. Mm -hmm. I think he's just thinking if I boost. He's probably trying to line up what is uh where he wants everybody to be in the following turns uh -huh. as well. So there he goes. He does it. And really, if that's that's gonna be close. Yeah, as I said, it's really tight on range. I'm also curious as to what he's doing with Rack here. Oh, it looks like just a two forward. Okay, never mind. That's not nearly as fun. It's like if he's if he's cutting up, then Vader might be in the way, or he'd be in the way in the following turn kind of thing. Oh, I think he's going to be out based on that target lock check. But maybe not. He was out. No, he was out. Uh, Rack was out. I'm curious about Vader. Oh. But I think Vader's still going to be out. He's... He's up, but he's farther back. This is one of the frustrating things when I realize that uh, these are like two of the four people I beat in the Aces regular season are playing for the championship. Well, at least you did well against the top players. <laughs> right. I just couldn't beat anybody else. Anyway, when's your... Uh... Uh, I don't know. He just posted it today, so I got to talk to Hathi. 
that's going to be an interesting matchup. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. I got lucky because basically I played Tex when he'd already punched his ticket. <laughs> so yeah. he just ran some... What did he... I think he just ran that two hawk uh, cable list yeah. we are talking about, Tyler. And so... I was and I was running like a, I had like Vader and five academies, so I had a pretty oh. competitive list. So kind of lucked you out. Know, you know, I I've played that the two hawk Vader lists or the two hawk Cavill lists. Uh -huh. um, so Cavill, Torkoal, Palab, and uh, it does some interesting things. Uh -huh. Like I feel like I don't play it well enough yet because there's been times where I've been like after a game I'm like okay I probably shouldn't have done that like uh, needing to just like floor it with all three of them after the initial joust instead of trying to turn because mm -hmm. you're freaking Y wings and a hawk they don't exactly turn right um but it's led to some interesting matchups and the great so i have probably four new players what uh what crit was that it's much oh he's choosing whether or not to start um and oh. watching them play against that build has been uh has been very interesting i think gunner is about to go off yeah, so uh, 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 that's what Morgan's yeah, thinking about. Yeah, so he's about. thinking about it. And really, I think odds, like the safe bet would be to just take the shield, but odds dictate with three dice unmodified, you're going to get one and a half hits. Four greens unmodified, you're going to get one and a half evades. So, uh, statistically it's, speaking, it's he not, should. It's not, it's not quite one and a half. It's a little less, right? For the four greens? So four, no, yeah, it's 12. No, that is. Yeah, that's one and a half, one and a half. Yeah, so he did oh. it. Oh, yeah, that was a wash. They both rolled high. Yeah. Tex, the frustration <laughs> continues. And does his Vader have a shot now? It's going to be close. I think he's just out. Uh, yeah. Just out. Oh. Sucks. But yeah, I like I like the uh, the double hawk Y wing, just for the fact of watching my new players like try to think about how they want to deal with it. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's yep. like there've been like a couple guys like would uh just refuse to focus. Yep. Like they're just uh it's like nothing but barrel rolls like all my time. <laughs> nope, not giving you a chance to steal anything. Like you don't get actions, I don't get actions. I'm, I'm done with. It. Like that's the game we're gonna play. Okay. <laughs> And especially after after somebody plays it like t the second time or whatnot, this is like the first time they they don't know what I'm going to do with it, and I just like one forward for three turns in a row because I'm just stacking focus tokens mm -hmm. up, and then like the second game they're like five forward, <laughs> and boost they're like we're getting this on turn two, you don't get all those tokens like you had last time. Um. But yeah, so we were talking about say the meta. Um. One thing that's I've kind of talked about, uh, I actually asked Morgan this question, and he said he feels like uh, SNV on the whole just doesn't quite match up with uh, Rebels and Imperials. And Sozin, you feel like the 88s is really the ideal list? That's at least so far before Wave 7 drops. Uh, that you feel like that's pretty much the best competitive list that SMV can feel right now, as far as you think. Um, yeah, I guess if you pinned me down and made me pick one, I'd probably pick uh, robots. Uh -huh. yeah. I uh, if auto thruster squints can just kill off the dash lists for me, to where no one wants to play them anymore. I won a store championship with uh, with Kath and Emin, like Proxmine Emin. Mm -hmm. And I should not have won the store championship. I got really, really lucky in the final round because it was uh, HLC Dash Corrin. Mm -hmm. And not only did uh, I basically got free damage on Corrin um, for a turn with Kath, like she just happened to get a shot on him. Mm -hmm. And then the following, and take two of the shields. And the following turn, Emin put a prox mine on him, and the kid rolled uh, two hits in a crit and killed him before he could green move and get his shield back. Wow. And then uh, after Emin proceeded to just die horribly without doing anything to Corrin, <laughs> or to a dash, right? 
just never had a chance of getting a shot on him. Um, he trapped himself on a corner for one turn. Like, he tried getting out of arc and just mm. barely didn't. And uh, Kath was able to strip his shields. And then on the following shot, because I, he had to turn out of the corner uh -huh. kind of a thing, uh, I crit him to PS0 and took his pilot skill away. Wow. And PTL. Like, mm. it was one of those fluke. He pulled two of the, like, six cards that would screw him. Yeah. And uh, But, like, that's the matchup that I can't beat with Kath Emmon. Like, most of the other matchups, I feel like I have a fighting chance. And they can do cool things, too. Because you have, you have tons of uh, prox mines, and it's great. Especially now with the munitions upgrade coming in. Yeah, so that's that one's going to be interesting. Cause, yes, it will. Because you can't get the... the uh, so, on Emmon specifically, you're, I feel like you're either going to run triple prox mine or double uh, proton. Yep. Right? And I don't know which one I like better. Yeah. Because um, I was running a uh, three prox mine um, experimental interface and recon spec, mm -hmm. so that I could get the focus to live. Um, and if I'm running the proton bombs, I don't know what I run. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know what I do at that point. Well. All right. I don't know. I was feeling like Tex was in a good spot, but now. I'm not so sure because Rack is kind of trailing here, and Vader is kind of going into the den of the tiger. Is that what I'm looking for? Uh, but he's out there in front, you know, and Loiken and Vader are kind of staring him down. Now he's thinking. What do you think he's thinking? Is he thinking about boosting to maybe get a little pot shot on Loiken, or is he thinking about? Boost in right to maybe kind of get away a little bit and circle back around him to buy Rack some time to work back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Boost right. I mean, so, you, you can't just wade into the maw of that tiger, as you say. It's going to get his head bit off if he uh, heads in. So I'm curious, because if he sits there, he can two right turn next turn and is fairly safe because Vader's got to unstress and Oiken's got to hard turn. Mm-hmm. And he, he can focus evade for Oiken might have a, a range three shot on him. And that's going to give Rack time to turn. And then on the following turn, he can do a, a two left and uh -huh. then boost to kind of come back around. Right, yeah. Um, so he's going to, you know what I mean? He plays for one turn or even like he, he two hard turns right and then he boosts left to kind of make the... Right. Actually, right. you're right, Tyler, because if he does a boost now, it limits his options. Yeah, he can't do it next turn. Uh, his angle will be wrong, right? Because that ast that asteroid's in the way of a hard, hard turn. I guess he could boost a barrel roll, but sure, absolutely. Well, maybe not. Well, yeah, I think he'd have barrel roll left if he did. No, I, mean, I think you're right. Leave him here. But knowing Tex, he's going to think about this for like uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Because he's one of the more cautious people with his ace pilots that I've ever met. And that's saying something, because I never let Sumter get shot if possible. Yeah, we've got people in the chat saying uh, um, people rather skip an action than give uh, with three and four ships than give one token. And it's mm -hmm. so true. Mm hmm. Although uh, I was uh, I was last week I was playing uh, Will, um, who was who you met at uh, CAC Sozin, and um, he was running a uh, a dual PTL robots list, and he was just focus evading every turn, and he was just like I'll let you pick what token I don't have, like I'll make the, I'll make you make that choice, which ended up being a tough choice a lot because it's like I want the evade token right because it's just a good token to have on a hawk, but I. Uh, I don't get to keep those. So if I steal the event and he doesn't shoot me, it doesn't do anything for me. Ugh. I feel like um, Scum needs to just be explored more too. Especially after Wave 7, them getting two new ships. That's going to be a that's going to be a pretty big boon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the flying Jawa <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the uh, Houndstooth. Houndstooth, I think, is uh, an incredible new ship. I'm yeah. 
It's uh, I'm pretty excited for it. Um, I'm excited that they have the whole like uh, uh, lifeboat ship Z95 mechanic. Yeah. Um, like strictly in the sense that like not for the houndstooth in any way. Like I don't care about like I don't care in that regard as much. But um, it leaves us open to if they continue releasing epic ships to us seeing an epic ship that can drop like Tie Fighters or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think would be awesome. Yeah, like thematically, I think that's right. a great idea. I'm really glad they came out with that. My biggest question about it right now is, uh, how many points do you get for killing the Hound's Tooth? Like, do you get the 50 points it costs, and then you get six points for killing the pup ship, or do you get 56 points for killing the pup ship? You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't think they've announced that, have they? No, they haven't. Like that's just that that was the first place my mind went. Is it's like a six point upgrade that you might not use in some games, but at the same point it, with MOV, you, with having to build around MOV as much as you do, um, is that one of those? It's a six point investment to give you four extra hit points to run away with to save on your fifty six point ship kind of a thing. Right. Yes, and Scum getting a PS9 is stupid. Yeah, especially it's a pilot I'm not familiar with. I guess some kind of EU thing going on there. Yeah, that's a lot of people have kind of uh, <laughs> expressed their uh, slight discontent with the fact that they finally do get one, and it's... Not this, Boba? Yeah, this guy no one's really heard of. Um well, my big thing, like, you can, yeah, I mean, you could make a pilot or whatever. I mean, that's that's fine. It's, but it's more the long lines of when they initially, initially released Scum. They were like, they're going to have to fight with a different advantage. They're not exactly. going to be able to abuse pilot skill. Yeah. And now we have a guy that can abuse pilot skill. But still, yeah, still, I mean, there's certain things you have to compromise when you're making a game. And, like, it's it's nice to say thematically this is what SNV is going to be. But, I mean... That's what they said about Rebels at the start, is like, oh, they're all going to be about synergy. Well, they're not really so much about that anymore. Um, so you feel like they had to get a 9 eventually. Yeah. Um, but, if, if, but the other thing is, like, the ship on itself, it's really just an X-Wing, really. So I was looking at it, like, I just really don't think it's going to get a whole lot of play, to be honest. 100% depends on that dial. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you've got a... So it's the same uh, manufacturer as the Seek Interceptor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you've got a crazy, uh, like a Signor's Loop of some kind, yeah, kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Like on that, so... Uh, that would be cool. Um, that could really set it apart. The other big thing is, I mean, I'm sure you guys have been reading what everyone uh, um, theorizing and whatnot, is if it's 20 points. Mm-hmm. Like if the base model at PS1 is only 20 points. Mm-hmm. Right. Then they um, basically fix the uh, pricing for it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, and you can get five of them on the table. Like, that's a dangerous list. Yeah. But then if they do that, if, if they do that, I feel like the base pilot would have to be pilot skill one because then they're getting, they're putting the X-Wing. I feel like the rookie on the whole is really one of the more underused ships, if not the. Uh, and so they're really making it, like, they have to do something about the X-Wing soon because I feel like if you compare a Tempest with a, the new title, uh, it's it's infinitely better than a Rookie. So I feel like it would have to be a 1 if it's not. Yeah, I would then, expect it to be a 1 for sure. Yeah. Wow. So... Um, we- so- yeah, did he did he clip? I think he cleared it. Oh, nice. Man. <laughs> you can just see the star underneath. Um Yeah. So my like I understand the twenty one points on an X Wing, not wanting to see five of them in the game. Like from the base of how they designed the game with. Mm-hmm. Totally got it. Great. Um the biggest so this goes back into and i've i've had debates and arguments with lots of people mostly on the internet and i'm sure you understand how well that went uh when you do pricing for a game and you look at what is meta what is competitive in a meta 
you those two things are vastly different things Mm -hmm. and you do not you don't price for what's good in the meta right Mm -hmm. because that shifts like the what's popular what's powerful is going to move based on what else is being played what's when you know timings all that kind of thing right so everyone wants to complain about the rookie being just straight up worse than the b-wing the rookie is straight up worse than the B-Wing because we've had the game shift to a more offensive nature from the point of when they came out. Mm-hmm. Like in the, when the original game was released, like the Tempest and the rookie were mirrored ships, right? It was just the Tempest was the defensive ship. You got evade actions, you had that extra evade die, but you didn't put out as much offense. We had this hard shift and you uh, heavy laser cannon turrets, phantoms having four dice native, um, lots of other things that throw big dice numbers. You can't pay like the amount of money or the amount of points you're paying for agility two on an X-wing sucks because agility two doesn't defend you well enough. Mm-hmm. Five shields on a B-wing defends you, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're not going to get one shot out of the out of the air on a B-wing as often as you will an X-wing. That's the big problem. That's not saying the X-Wing's bad. It's just saying the hyper-offensive nature of what people are building right now is not favorable. Yeah, you have to be able to survive a one-shot from Whisper. Right. Or you have to be able to survive a one-shot from any four di- three-dice-based group. I mean, I, I've one-shot multiple X-Wings with Sunter before. You know what I mean? Like, yep. it happens. Uh, <laughs> I distinctly remember... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the Galactic Cup Finals 8 match, I one-shot a Luke Skywalker with Draw Their Fire. Mm. Which was a pretty pretty ridiculous turn. Um, so, like, that's where the, the X-Wing suffers presently. It's, it's not that the X-Wing inherently is bad. It's that a rookie pilot at 21 points is not... It's paying points for defense that it's not using in the offensive nature of the, of the game. I and Major Juggler's talking in chat. I will agree that it's overcosted by one point, but I but I feel like it's overcosted by one point in the sense that it, they don't want five of them in the game. Right, which they maybe it's a mistake. I mean, yeah, I think if I get five, I would. I feel like if if people, I'm just I, I'm not saying they should or would ever do this, but if they just came out right now and said X wings are all one point, I really don't think. The majority of people have a major gripe with that. I'm not saying that's what they should do, and I'm sure they won't do it, but I'm just saying I feel like most people will probably... Because, I mean, if you compare a rookie to a Tempest right now, well, yeah. it's not Sorry even close. The Tempest, like, absolutely annihilates. Oh, yeah. Got, no, I, I, yeah. I agree. We got so. Bader's coming in. Yeah, he is. He, he didn't take my advice with... I'm really surprised by that. Yeah. Because now Chirino the, is going to yeah. be stuck behind him, and Chirino is not going to be able to boost... If he, if he he might be able to get a range three shot on Vader, but he wants to be able to boost into range two, and I don't think Vader's going to be in his way. So I don't think he can. Yeah, this is well. Maybe he's going to barrel roll Vader. He could. Yeah. Create space. And maybe he's so, thinking if he <sighs> if he rolls left, can he get out of Oiken? No, probably not. Left back. Sp- yeah. He'll be just in. So in chat, uh, we're talking about uh, with the way the dials on the new ship's X-Wing isn't fair and that uh, a better dial would, like not even a better dial would make the X-Wing playable. Like I hate that argument because the X-Wing has like a top third dial in the game. It's a good dial. Like it has an awesome dial. It doesn't have post-action movement or post-movement, uh, post-movement Movement, right? It's a built-in engine upgrade, in my opinion. I, <clears throat> I guess, but then I feel like it's a it's a better A wing, right? Like it's just better than the A wing at that point. Mm-hmm. True. Poor X wing. <laughs> <laughs> and and so the X wing suffers the same problem that the A wing or the Tie Advanced suffered, right? Like the rookie X wing and the red X wing. They don't. You don't get enough for what you're paying for them in the present meta. Like you, they they're not going to live long enough to deal the damage they need to. Um, but guess who does? Biggs. Biggs is still totally worth 25 points. Like Biggs will always be worth 25 points. 
Wedge is still really good. Yeah, both like they're the PS2. two. They're the two best. Maybe Tarn like, with R seven. Yeah, and Tarn with R seven yeah. is a very good ship. Like yeah, Tarn R seven. Uh, he's twenty five as well, right? With the R seven, he is. Yes. Yeah, like those those three those three, sh- three ships make it stupid hard to do anything to the X wing because anything you do to a rookie or to a red buffs those guys nat- like naturally. But again, I mean that's what a lot of guys argued about the advanced. Is uh, they say, well, if we give the now it's going to make Vader broken. I but sh- that's what they how did. Many so. va- how many how many Vader? We see two Vaders in the the top tier yeah. tournament online, and how many Vaders were being flown the yeah. entire like as soon as that title dropped, everyone was like, oh hey, this is pretty good, yo. Um. No, I, I so in the chat, I totally agree that a one hard turn does make a top tier dial. Um. And you see that on interceptors. On we're going to ignore the fact that the Falcon, the the YTs have a one hard turn, which is an absolutely stupid thing and one of the most atrocious mess ups in this entire game. It is weird. It just doesn't. Is make that sense. a freighter outturns a goddamn X wing? Yeah. Um. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, like, so think of everything that has a one hard turn that can actually use it. Uh, you've got Tie fighters. You have Tie interceptors. You don't have bombers. You no, mostly no. you mostly don't have defenders. Um, Phantom, yeah, the Phantom has it. B wing's so got you, it for red. Yeah, the the B wing or the so it's a red on the B wing, which so it has it, but it's not great. Yeah. Juno. Yes, sure. There will be there will be some advanced, or but like for when you look at that, those number of ships in the broader spectrum of all of the ships that are in the game, like the X wing's dial is fantastic. Like it's, it's, if you put them all, if you gave them a, a dial ranking system, right. And 100 being the, the a wing style and zero being the shuttles dial. I would say the X wing is like a 66, 67. Hey, Sorry to interrupt, but text finally finished deliberating and oh, did, he did roll. He rolled. <laughs> that, that was what? 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> what I said. Yeah. I think I called that. Well, yeah. And I say it, sometimes you do not have the stamina to watch his games. It's the, uh, <laughs> I, this is one of those games that I'm glad I have multiple monitors in my, uh, my desktop setup. So I can have other things can have, have other conversations going on. This is, don't uh, think this is going to work. I'm wondering what he was thinking. Was he hoping to get out of range of Vader there? Is that what he was thinking? I can't imagine that. Cause they're pretty much, He's sticking out farther than Oiken. What was he? He's thinking about the boost. He's worried the boost is not going to clear. Yeah. Clear Vader's arc? Yeah, no. it's going to clear Vader. Uh, he's worried that Rare Iron Chapel will not be able to engine upgrade past Vader. Oh. And but, he won't be able to. He's right. I'm kind of surprised well, he didn't. Because he's stressed. Oh, yeah. He's stressed anyway. Oh, so yeah. He clipped the debris field. But... Oh, yeah. Uh, Man, I, uh, Blair, did you see my last uh, Reddit Cup game? Uh, tonight or <laughs> the no, actual no, game? That, that, the one that, that didn't happen tonight. No, it was uh, it was last week. I caused three or so. I caused two damage from the same debris field. Oh wow! Like in this on the same turn. It's like really, come oh. on. Oh. Oh, he did a three turn, wow. not a two turn. Aha. Oh, he's uh. Mm. Ha. Okay, this all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, cause I, that's what I was a, thinking. I was like, well, why would he oh, roll boy, right? Dude, a... I was thinking he should have rolled left, but now, yeah. <laughs> and I think I knew it wasn't that bad. That so boost now he... probably will make it now. I think. Yeah, he's got the boost. That's interesting. I think that Tex basically kind of put himself to sleep there. <laughs> yeah, that would have been all road just about. It checks for a lock on Oiken. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, refields do not make you skip the uh, perform action step um, in the base rules. Uh, they cause you to be stressed. If you can deal with that stress, such as Tycho, or uh, my personal favorite is to move it to uh, your, uh, then you can take your action as normal. Which is why I uh, I've been running Yor a lot lately, and been very happy. 
the biggest pains that I've had in this game are people causing me stress on my defenders or push the limit fells and your makes that all go away. You got this, range two on Vader? Looks like Yeah, it. he's just clipping it. Yeah, he, um, does, he does not want to split his fire here, but same token, he... Yeah. He's got to shoot Vader with uh, Rear Admiral. Well, yeah, this is that situation yeah. that uh, Star was talking about earlier, is that this could be a spot where if he goes at Vader and doesn't forces him yep. to use the token, then he could potentially just go at Oiken. But it, do you want to do that, though? Because he doesn't have Pred... And he's not going to be able to use his ability, so I feel like right. probably just going to go with Vader with both, I would think. Yeah. And Boy can actually, he's got some uh, defense chops now with yeah. uh, the and the evade. And I think that might be through the debris, too, from Chirino. Uh huh. He's going to go with Vader. We can turtle up. That is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm looking that up, uh, Cabby. He's saying in chat that uh, um, the debris fields say to follow all the normal obstacles as from like the normal rule book. My guess would be it means for uh, shooting obstruction. Yeah, that would be my guess. It does. At least that's why I've been playing it. I hope it does. <laughs> right. I I totally agree. Uh, let me get to the. Oh, I shouldn't have Oiken. Wow. He just doesn't want to split his fire. You... Yeah. Yep. Three two. Yeah. Mm. Close. I think that's through. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> Here comes double focus. Oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> you would. <laughs> and now. Now I Gunner, right? I think oh. you just take it. Because then you can. A, you know Vader is going to shoot at Oiken. So I think you just take it and save the evade. Vader. Oh, and you stop the gunner. But that's a crit. It's so like but if it was take any a other crit thing, from Vader as well from true. the ATC, so Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thinking music. Not seeing the debris fields in the FAQ. Maybe I will. Official tournament rules.
Mm. He burns it. Here, I take the hit. Save that for Vader's shot. Yeah. So on happier news of the FAQ that came out, since uh, I stand by my, uh, I don't like the phantom change, but that's fine. Uh, apparently enough people do, so people with their wallets wins out. Uh, the change to uh, escalation list building is fantastic. You know, uh, I didn't really mind that, to be honest. I played uh, I played a Super Dash in, that, in the escalation tournament. And yeah, I don't know. I guess I maybe if I played more, I would I would have agreed with it. But I felt if, like if you run up against a sixty point Han, it's almost impossible to beat. Huh. It's just such an obnoxious list to deal with. Mm -hmm. Especially if you want to run anything that's not like geared at killing it. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Like, if, you, if you're wanting to run any other style of list, you just don't have time. Yeah. Because um, realistically, like, so, like, I want to bring Fell, right? So I have, like, a 34-point Fell or a 35-point Fell. Uh. If I want a chance at killing Super Han or, like, a, a really fat Han, like, I have to not bring anything else because I don't have time to kill him. You know what I mean? Like, if he kills one TIE Fighter and then runs for the entire match, yeah. I lose. Well, in a timed, yeah, I get that. Okay, so two crits. <coughs> Do I even have? They have the rules for. Do we have the rules for debris fields? Someone find the rules for debris fields and link that to me in chat. I'm apparently not capable of doing that. Ouch. That's a pretty brutal roll. Evade. Oh, he gets the gunner now. I'm surprised he burned the target lock there. Oh, man. Ooh. Jeez. What did he, he predator to one, right? He did. Even still. Brutal. Damn it. Hmm. That was a lot of shooting for only two damage. You have... So we're going to see another round of hurt, and then they'll swing, swing back and do it all over again. Yeah, now... What are you doing with Hoyken? See. Three four. Well, I'm wondering if a three bank is gonna bump Chirino. Do you want to bump Chirino? Sure. But you also you kind of want to use Oiken to screen for Vader, because Vader's got to do a green, and you don't want to bump with Vader. So yeah. you want to try to potentially screen for him so he can do a one left bank. Maybe take an action or two actions. I, I think a three three left bank is clear, but it'll get in the way of of, of Morgan Vader. Mm hmm You could do a like a three hard left. Uh huh. And block try to block the other Vader. Yep. Okay. After looking finding the uh, the debris fields. I would argue that uh so you have moving into and through obstacles. And so you have the two like numbers there. 
Like, so it's number one. This is the, from the original core rule book for op, uh, asteroids. So execute the maneuver as normal, but skip the perform action step. The player rolls one attack die. The ship then suffers any damage or critical rolled C suffering damage. Um, the debris clouds, basically, they are obstacles as described in the core rule book with the following exceptions. Those one and two should be a direct replacement for that one and two. So execute the maneuver as normal, but assign a stress token to that ship after the check pilot stress set step and then roll one attack die on a critical hit result suffer one critical damage um because they're basically like it's that same one and two like i feel like that's the exact verbiage that it would need to be it's uh page uh two of the uh of uh the fa or page four of the faq and then page 20 of the uh rule book Now, granted, um, local TOs can rule things how they want. Um, I specifically sat down at that 2v2 tournament I was talking about at Adepticon and uh, explained how Dauntless works because it was like right after I had learned about it, but it was before the FAQ came out to really uh, set the wording up properly. Um, and my opponents were like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's how it works. And then we got into it, and he like wanted to do this to do the incorrect, basically, uh, he wanted to reveal a green, um, st lose the stress, and that's dauntless. I was like, well, no, that's, remember, we talked about this, that's not how that works. And then uh, the TO was like, well, no, that's that's how dauntless works, and I had to eventually like, pull up the uh, the FAQ on my phone, be like, here's the actual steps, there is a, a step thing here. So, that would be my argument. Now, that's, I mean, that is a good, I feel like that's, that's something that would be uh, good to be added to the the FAQ in there that that's the direct replacement, but I feel like that's how they're supposed to work. So the argument is, you do do you still get an action on debris even if you're not stressed? Yeah, if you if you yeah. either A can take the uh, take actions while stressed, or B you can lose the stress somehow. Could you perform your action? Yeah, because it says execute maneuver is normal, but assign a stress to that ship after the check. Pilot. So by saying after the check pilot stress, I would interpret that as immediately afterwards. Yeah, and so then, you basically, you you execute maneuver, check pilot stress, perform action. Yeah, because perform action comes after that. So yeah, I would the, say you can too. Yeah. The the argument was that uh, it says debris clouds are obstacles as described in the core rule book with the yeah. following exceptions. So, but yeah, no, I would, uh, I would definitely. Uh, hey guys, quick question. If he rams both answer. ships simultaneously... Does he do one damage on each ship? Uh, where's the? FX? I believe, yeah, I believe they, they mentioned that like... and said yes, you can. Oh, well, got the FAQ right here. I was like, I have the FAQ yeah. open. Okay. And uh, assuming he doesn't move next turn. Yeah, like they're both they both bump weaken, then I'm pretty sure you can. I felt like I read that somewhere. I don't know. This is also one of those, like, if, for example, Morgan had that question, right? It's like, oh, I want to, I want to, uh, double bump with Hoyken next turn. So I'm going to, you don't want to ask that question if you're, if you're, yeah. if you're not sure on it, <laughs> it totally like predicts what you're yeah. going to do. Right. Right. Well, one of the players may or may not have just asked me this question. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, drop bombs. I'm not seeing it in the FAQ anywhere. Chat? Anybody know? Yes, damage on each. Only possible with parallel bases. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I mean, I would think so. I don't think you necessarily have to be parallel, though, because, like... Uh, down by Dauntless, he said. Uh... 
And that's just one damage to each ship. Yeah. All yeah. Right. That's, that's so on in the FAQ it says Loiken. It refers to page five. It says touching multiple ships. A ship can end its maneuver touching multiple ships. If a ship overlaps two ships, and its own base ends its maneuver touching both ships, it is overlapped after moving backwards along the template. The overlapping ship is concerned to be touching both overlapped ships, and both overlapped ships are touching it. Uh, we're more thinking if both of them, if he positions into a way that both run into him, and then he next turn basically stalls himself to where he yeah. gets both of them. It's so that way you could get there. They could yes, do all kinds of craziness. Yeah, right. he's gonna run into both. And I'm with Oiken, and then the other guy doesn't move, and yep. next turn he gets damaged again. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, yeah, Tex is in a bad spot because he's got to either go straight or bank right to clear that stress. Uh, he can't. He certainly can't bank left. So he, he's either got to just hard turn left or right and keep the stress, or just go right into that. And I think Morgan could easily one left bank with Vader, and then like do a barrel roll right to block any straight move by Chirino to protect Vader, and then also probably line up a good shot against Texas Vader. Well, but we're talking about right now if Oiken jumps like a three left bank yeah. or a three left turn right, like just puts himself right in there. But then if like, he does that, really... it worries. The worry is that Vader won't have room to do a green move. Then he would bump into the back of Oiken, which you really don't want to happen. Um, you could just two forward with Vader. So I'm gonna be right back. Like if so, if Oiken does a three left turn. A three left turn, yeah, that would be good. Get that out of the way, I think. Yeah, Rack could hard left. Well, so he doesn't want a hard left because he wants to get the uh, Yasani evade. But yeah, so he really has question. to go straight, but. Or a two bank right, but. Yeah, both. Gonna, I feel like all those are bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like everyone's uh, taking a bio break. I will be right back. You know, one thing that's telling about looking at these lists, uh, not only the two nearly identical makeups, but if you you can't see, I'm looking at Texas, uh, but these are both engine upgrades. So not only does he, has he stacked them on each of his ships, but if you look at Morgan's, it's the one upgrade all four ships have. So. Any of you younger players thinking, looking at what some of the more experienced guys like to run? I know everyone knows theorists will put an engine upgrade on motherfucking anything. Uh, for four points, when I first started out, I looked at that as, wow, four points, is that really worth it just to be able to boost? But, yeah, nowadays it's such a positional game. Uh, you find that, especially with ships that are going to be out there a long time and last a long time, it just really helps to have it.
Texas still think, well, I think you got to just go forward with Tex. Because, okay, you don't get an action. That's not the worst thing. You're in a furball here either. You're going to get a range shot, a range one shot on one of these guys. There's no way you can bump into both of them. You're still going to get Gunner. You're still going to get his ability to change a focus to a crit. And you're going to get your ESA on. If you're two left turn, well, now you're just running away from them and leaving your Vader potentially in a bad spot. And you're still stressed, and you're not going to get Isan. That's the big thing, is not get... You've really